What's going on everybody? Welcome to the sixth KV Basics tutorial video. In this video what we're going to be talking about is the float layout. So this is another version of a layout. Now as we can see this layout is is fairly responsive. Um, you know we can move things around at least and the buttons are somewhat placed decently but not the greatest and you can do stuff like this right and and you you can conceive there are some layouts that are some reasons why you wouldn't want this layout so I'm going to show one more layout and that's going to be the float layout so the idea of the float layout is that you can kind of dynamically size and place things so I don't know stuff like this doesn't really happen so anyway let's go ahead and close this and talk about that so for me, I'm going to make some changes again. Uh, this will be my KV file 4. Um, I'm already regretting not keeping these the same number as the video, but that's okay. So anyway, 6. Uh, and this one's already saved as 4. Uh, cool. So I'm going to save that. Okay. Now we're ready to go ahead and uh, get started. So I'm going to... The only thing I would get rid of here let's see for button will be size so we'll keep the font size as 40 for now I mean you might want to change that to something more dynamic later on uh, but we'll keep the font size as 40 and we'll talk about the other stuff later but then we'll just delete this so currently we'll just have a you know this button definition so we'll save that, and no longer do we need our widgets class. We're going to get rid of that for now. We want to keep everything as simple as possible so you can kind of see the required connections uh, and nothing more. So we're also going to get, get in, learn to speak. So <laughs> get rid of widget. We don't need that anymore. And in fact, we aren't even going to need label. We're just going to have Kiwi app import app. And then one more thing we're going to now say from Kiwi.uix.floatlayout import capital F float capital L layout. Now, we deleted our widgets class, so we can't use that anymore. So we have to use float layout. So now our simple app is just going to return float layout. Now, that's really nothing. It, it should run still, but there's really nothing to our float layout. It's just a blank screen at the moment. Whoops. So, uh, I guess I'll just close it here. Yes. So, how do we add to this float layout? Well, all we need to do is, you know, these parent and children. So, now we can specify this parent class that we have, which is float layout. So, let's just go ahead and do that. So, add our little tags for the parent. And this is float layout. Don't forget your colon. It's really easy for you Python folk. One, two, three, four. And now we're ready to kind of define some things about the float layout. Now for me, I want to say that we're going to have two buttons. So we're going to have a button here and a button here. Now we can add some text to our button. So one, two, three, four. And we'll say text is uh, Kiwi. And then down here, one, two, oops. One, two, three, four. Text will be again uh, Kiwi. So now we've got two buttons with text. We've got font size and color, but we don't have the button's size. Now, one of the kind of things about our float layout that's going to be cool is that we can use a dynamic size with um, some hinting. And we quite literally, the parameter for this is size underscore hint. And we want to say our size hint, we'll say is point, uh, for now, we're going to say 0.3. I'll show you. I think the best thing is to kind of write it out and then show you how everything affects things. But this is basically 0.3 of the width. So in fact, let's do 0.25. So it's a quarter of the x. And then of the y, we're going to say 0 0.2. Um, I guess we'll actually let's do 0.3. <clears throat> OK. <laughs> we'll play with these later. Anyway. Um, so this is our button. So now this is the like the parent information. So this stuff is already being applied to these. Okay. The only thing that's different is the text, which I guess isn't different. So <laughs> make this tutorials. I'm not sure why I wrote Kiwi twice. Wasn't thinking, I guess. So we've got text, text, and now the only other thing that we really need to do is the position of the button. So for position, it's kind of like size hint. 
And the uh, term here is going to be post underscore hints colon. And this is going to actually be like a dictionary, okay? So you've got your key and your value. And the key can be a lot of things. You've got X, Y, left, right, up, down. Or top, bottom, rather. I'm sorry. X, Y, left, right, top, bottom. Sorry. Don't mean to confuse anyone. So, and each one kind of has a slightly different idea to it, but anyway, we'll, we'll use them all, or we'll try to anyways. At least one from each dichotomy. So, we're going to say the X, uh, X will be, and actually this needs to be uh, in quotes, so X colon, and we're going to say X will be just zero, so this will be the zero with, or the no X, okay? <laughs> so zero, basically these values, all of them are going to be between zero and and they'll be somewhere between zero and one. One being full, complete, zero being none. So if x is zero, that should make total sense to you. Where, where is x zero? Well, it, that means left, all completely left. Then, now we need some sort of y definition. Now we could, we could literally say y, and we could say y is zero. Um, or we can say, uh, I think it's uh, lowercase t, top. Top, but is top like top, the question, it's like almost like a de the degree of topness. So if we say top zero, this means it has zero degrees of topness. So actually top zero would be bottom. Okay, so we're gonna say top one. So this key B button needs to be, or will be, according to the hints, the top left. Now, that's not really that special. We could have done that really easily. But this button is where it's going to really shine. So now we will do a post underscore hint. And again, this time we'll say, instead of X, we'll use a different one. We'll say right. And this is so our degree of rightness. So if we wanted a button to be completely right, what degree of rightness would we have? Complete, full rightness, one. Then uh, we'll have another variable here. Uh, and we'll say for now, uh, we'll just say top one again, and let's just make oops one, and let's make sure everything works up to this point. So we haven't really tested anything, right? So now you've got Kiwi and you've got tutorials, and then what we can do is we can kind of move everything around, okay? And you can see that a couple of things are happening. Not only are the buttons moving, they're changing in size. So we could even, although the text is going to run over, but uh, we could do this, and you'll see that the buttons themselves, at least, will not run into each other. So this would be an example of having, you know, many different screen resolutions, yet everything still fits and you've got no run over. So the float layout pretty much can allow you to stop things from running over each other, so long as you're using the hints, right, because we can still make text run over it. Well, I'm going to do it. There we go. <laughs> you can make text run over each other. Now, um, that's basically it, but let's just really solidify what we're, what we're seeing here. So let's leave, well, no, let's move Kiwi. So we're going to say top, whatever. We'll say instead of 1, 0 0.5. So this will be half topness, right? So this can get kind of confusing. Because now when we say top is 0 0.5, it almost looks like this Kiwi element, right? Like here's the top, 0 0.5 is here. And now it's beginning to look like this element here is being treated as if it's moving around by the top left corner, right? Because this marks 50%, not this, okay? So that can get pretty confusing pretty fast um, or pretty challenging at least. Um, especially because this, so now this application could in theory be almost dictated by either the bottom left or the top left. That kind of sucks. Uh, <laughs> it could get really confusing really fast. But I like the idea that you can orient things by different, different values. But let's try now y 0 0.5. Uh, what I, I must have hit F5 on the uh, key V. Okay, let's try one more time. Right. So now you can see how this is by the y element you know, half, and this is illustrating how Y is indeed referencing the bottom left because this marks the halfway mark right down here. This, of course, doesn't. We can see this very easily visually. 
So that's kind of corresponding to the rest of Kiwi, whereas top doesn't. But then what if we said, okay, uh, we come over here and we said um, bottom. So the degree of bottomness. <laughs> uh, there, but 0 0.5, right. Okay, so anyway, you can imagine that this can get pretty confusing pretty fast, uh, especially like, you, you know, you start playing with these, like say bottom is zero, and then you're expecting, um, right, like my expectation of bottom equals zero would be actually top, right? Like it would be zero degrees of bottomness. But anyway, I the reason why that's occurring, I believe anyways, would be is because the degree of bottomness is zero, but since everything starts at zero, zero, it remains at the bottom. Okay, so I think that's what's happening here, and that would be why maybe you would say why uh, you would. Uh, I, it's hard because it just depends on which way you've always you've been orienting your program as far as like where you want to you know what words you might want to use. But anyway, keep it in mind that it's going to be somewhat confusing sometimes. <laughs> but you've got all of these values, and I think the best way to en envision these values is in ness, right? So this is xness, yness, topness, rightness. Um, but you can do stuff like you know degrees like this, like right 0 0.3, for example, or let's do 0 0.5 for the one that's over some, and we can run that, and you can see here that it's always going to start at about you know 30 percent so you can move the window all you want and you pretty much can always be uh, comfortable as far as where the button will be again the text is not uh, meshing with us uh, but we, we, we can work on that as well so anyway uh, that's gonna be it for the float layout and all of that hopefully that made sense uh, the first time I saw float layout and really still I have to think about it when I'm inputting these values because <laughs> You just, first of all, they've already flipped, you know, where the zero, zero is on you. And then you've got these degrees of these values that you can input. And it gives you a lot of dynamicness and stuff like that, but uh, it can be confusing. So anyway, but you can always pretty much get away with using X and Y, but you should probably know about these as well. Anyways, that's it for this tutorial. If you guys have any questions or comments, please feel free to leave them below. Otherwise, as always, thanks for watching. Thanks for all the support, subscriptions, and until next time.